Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning. And today my guest is Mastena Nazarian, who is an Alexander Technique teacher in Melbourne, Australia. And we're going to talk today uh, about her experiences growing up in a in war torn Iran and how the Alexander technique has helped her deal with some of the uh, fallout from from that experience. Uh, Mastena, uh, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And thank you for 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 being on the show. And I hope I got your first name pronounced correctly, Mastena, right? Is yes, that, that's oh, getting excellent. better all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Mastena, before we, we talk about your experiences and, and what what role the Alexander Technique uh, played in helping you with them, um, if someone asks you what the Alexander Technique is and you've just got a half a minute or so, what what do you tell them? Alexander Technique is a method of self-awareness that uh, allows the person to become an observer of how they react to situations. So mm-hmm. about the how the what the habitual responses might be to situations. Mm-hmm. And I assume that your early early life experiences uh, did create some habitual reactive patterns that were maybe necessary at the time, but not useful later on. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, yeah. I was born in uh, 1973, and in 1978 or nine, the revolution started in Iran, and mm-hmm. um, it really did affect the life at outside of home, and in some ways, it also f- affected the life inside of home because we are, became possible immigrants for about six years. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so you can kind of imagine the. The energy inside the house was one that, are we going to leave? Are we not going to leave? Are we going to leave? Are we not going to leave? And it's so this constant, uh, almost flight and flight response. And as a child growing up, I wasn't able to obviously label that, but it definitely is um, is something that can enter under one's skin, as it were, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. perhaps even you know form parts of one's personality. But as a, as a youngster, I remember being, um, you know, accidentally exposed to quite quite uh, graphic images from what was going on, supposedly going on in the streets. And mm-hmm. uh, one that I remember was a, a young, it was in a newspaper, and it was a picture of a young boy holding up a severed foot. And recently mm-hmm. I realized that's probably the basis of my love for surrealist art. <laughs> Right. So it, oh, it's been this yeah. it's been this amazing journey of um kind of being shocked by that probably as a 5-year-old and then being intrigued to search for um a way of creating order within the disorder that I was exposed to um especially in school there was a lot of um there's a lot of uh instability and there was a lot of hostility and uh um, you may remember, or your parents may remember, but I grew up up to I think year six or seven in a situation where they could they could hit you in school if they wanted to, and mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so it became a very sort of tense situation um, outside the house and within the house. It was, it was things were going on fine, but it was also tense because we didn't know if we were going to stay and we, were going to, we didn't know if we were going to leave. And right, right. And, so, and, and were kids hitting you because they knew that your family wanted to immigrate? Um, it wasn't the kids, actually. No, oh, teachers. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yes, wow. so... Um, so they, recently, they knew and they took it out on you. Um, yeah, I suppose it was systematic or random. I'm not sure, but... Um, uh, I'm I'm from a Jewish background, and uh, one of the first things that the Khomeini's regime took up was the whole Israel and Palestine question. Oh, okay, and, uh, yeah. That's another that's another thing that's sort of under my skin, as in I 
can't bear to watch anything about it on the news because it's just gonna like would you guys just stop you know <laughs> right right um right. so yeah we they we were sort of in the jewish school but with very um i suppose right-wing islamist kind of people running the school um, oh i see yeah what so. an odd situation that must have been yeah, yeah i suppose it was odd <laughs> yeah so um you you got to America when you were eleven years old, and I did you at that point or in your teenage years? Did did you have any uh, insights or awareness of the of some of these patterns that may have already started to develop fight or flight patterns, or or were you pretty oblivious at that point? Well. Um, I would say that the fight and flight pattern started showing up um, as a feeling, pre- pretty much what um, some pe- some of your listeners might be able to uh, relate to as sort of uh, stomach butterflies, I suppose you call them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there was like a constant sort of underlying level of buzz, uncomfortable buzz throughout the teenage years and before that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I suppose I was aware of it. I got very interested in music and I found, luckily I found that as the source of being able to, um, I suppose, start a practice, you know, start a mm-hmm. practice that had a goal mm-hmm. that that sort of was, a, I suppose, an outlet of sorts. Yeah. Right, right. So at some point you were motivated to explore the Alexander technique. How did that come about? Well, uh, in college I uh, met a, a, another student. I went to music school and she was a singer who was um, taking a break from singing. And she said that, you know, she's had some vocal problems and she'd, uh, found Alexander Technique, and then a few months on, I saw her perform in a in a, one of our recitals, and I was really, really impressed by the um, simple quality that was kind of not just about her voice, but about her voice and movement and everything. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, then uh, next thing I know, I'm reading Alexander's writing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, um, right. And then little by little, I got, I was in the situation where I could uh, afford a course of lessons and, um, yeah, I found it very, uh, very useful. Right. Well, so it sounds like one of the things that attracted you was, was this other uh, uh, woman's bearing almost more than, mm. than her singing. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I suppose it was that uh, sense of groundedness and uh, simplicity in the communication as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, she was it, she was doing uh, one of the couple of people who was doing a backups in the R and B tune, and there was something so honest about how she moved and how she sang. It wasn't it wasn't put on at all. It wasn't about what the audience might want to you know see or hear. It was just very very honest and grounding and grounded so yeah Mm -hmm. and so did did you find that the lessons you had helped you achieve some some measure of that same quality in yourself i suppose to a certain extent it gave me the tools to practice Mm -hmm. Um, i very much think that the alexander technique is not about uh getting something and that's it. <laughs> it's about right. in, in, instilling a process and that you become empowered with your experiences through practicing that. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Uh, and so as, as you continue that practicing, um, as sort of a side effect perhaps, uh, did you notice that the symptoms, the kinds of symptoms you had noticed earlier lessened? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's to do with uh, how we get in the way of um, allowing our daily movements to um, be easeful mm-hmm. and how 
just really quite indirectly the Alexander Technique through its practical procedures and through its basic frameworks can, um, as I said before, allow us to become an observer of what our habits are. Right. And then it allows for a lot more choice um, in how we react and how we respond. Right. And I am just want to just read a line from your website, which I think really expresses this very well. Uh, you write that by addressing the core of who I am and not necessarily delving into the underlying story that had become a fixed and unreal self-image, the Alexander Technique has given me the tools and understanding to place conscious choice between everyday happenings and my responses to them, mm. which I th I think is a, a absolutely brilliant description of what the technique can do, and it also mm. makes it very clear I think that it's not a therapy in 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 the sense that most people understand therapy. We you know we don't diagnose. Situ we don't diagnose illnesses, or we're not psychotherapists, or anything like that. We 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 just basically Alexander teachers can give you tools for for working on yourself. That's right. That's, uh, that's, that's exactly that's a, that, what it is. Yeah. 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 So um, if we could fast forward a bit to your, I mean, obviously at some point you decided to become a teacher. Yeah, it was like a 10-year point, Robert. <laughs> right, right. And uh, I assume that the, on, I mean, the training, Alexander training course, it, in part, at least, is kind of a, uh, a concentrated immersion in Alexander learning on the part of the people yes. on the course. And w would it be fair to say that the increased well-being that you noticed earlier continued? Uh, while you were on the training course? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It, uh, just having um, the time and the contact um, with the aspects of the technique and with the, with the technique itself mm -hmm. was definitely helpful. Um, the training course is, is a, a sort of a three-year three -year period where one... Um, decides to commit to that process again and again and again. Mm -hmm. So within that, the, I, I definitely said that the training, three years of training was a happy part of my life, but I don't mean happy as in uh, very jolly. <laughs> no, I, yeah. No. <laughs> so it does, it, it does have okay. its uh, roller coaster rides. Um, Mm -hmm. but, Absolutely, yeah. Because emotional stuff can come out, absolutely, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but, but I, it also gives you gives you um, renewed renewed um, commitment, as I said, um, in how to deal with things, because you realize that in the end, your uh, whole world is really based on how you decide to react so being able to put a little bit of a pause between the the event and the way you decide to react um is, is quite a powerful thing it's very empowering and um and and I, you know i would say about that that you, you hear that uh idea presented by by a lot of people it's not just alexander teachers who would who might talk in those terms but i do think that the alexander technique is provides very specific methodology for doing that and uh that to me is one of its greatest strengths uh yeah absolutely um because it it allows the both people, the teacher and the student, to um, learn and relearn how to um, return to a natural place of movement. And if the lesson is instilled in the uh, on the on the principle that movement and thinking are really the same thing, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. then through the movement, other other things, your state of mind, your the way you frame things for yourself, the way you frame yourself can also return to a more um, dynamic and, um, in my case, unfixed kind of um, place, which is lovely, which is uh, allows more energy and allows more time and allows a wider perspective. Right. And we're we're running a little bit towards the end of our time frame, but I don't want to uh, end with that. We talked earlier before the interview about whether you – at whether you you have as clients, particularly people with anxiety disorder, and you said not not specifically, but that your experience with using with having the technique help you with anxiety disorder issues very much informs your teaching in general. I believe that's what you said, and if that's yeah. if that's the case. Could you just elaborate on that a little bit for our listeners? What 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 that means in terms of how you teach and how it how is it how does that inform your teaching? Well, essentially, I um, practice the principles in teaching, and the first one is to allow space, uh, and usually the student will be able to provide a little bit of information as a way in, as a a sort of a compassionate and sort of empathic, eh, based on empathy, Mm -hmm. uh, a way, a way into the situation that I'm presented with. And uh, I find that by working on really simple movement, like uh, sitting or standing or walking, um, that we're able to reframe the, the energy that we're both dealing with, you know, mm-hmm. uh, being able to reframe things in, um, in the perspective of moment by moment change rather than, you know, I can only do this because someone else told me that I can only do that. And that could really apply to, well, I can only bend so far. And because someone told me I can only bend so far, I was like, wait, let's, let's come to this space mm-hmm. and, and look at the joints of movements, looking at our connections and looking at our relationship with gravity. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So, and, so someone discovers that they have of physical abilities that they perhaps had been told they didn't or didn't think they had. And that, um, to a certain extent, opens up the possibility that there might be other limitations that they have inadvertently put on themselves that may not necessarily be permanent. Absolutely, yeah. And, and again, I think that's an extraordinarily powerful way of getting at those, quote, non-physical, unquote, issues by by going in right at the physical level, which is pretty easy for most, for many people to notice and uh, you know, it's pretty grounded in reality, as you say, our relationship with gravity and stuff like that. I mean, you can't get much realer than that. <laughs> and yes. um, so, that I mean, that's uh, that, that to me is kind of a fascinating, it's always been a fascinating aspect of the technique, that it deals with observable phenomena. It's not, Absolutely. you know, it's Absolutely. not... Uh, um, yeah. So, um, is there anything you want to add before we uh, bring our conversation to an end? Um, just that I'm really now exploring how the Alexander Technique has commonalities with other practices. Mm-hmm. And uh, just based on that last thing you said, uh, coming to the physics of natural movement has an incredible power to reconnect us to mm-hmm. ourselves. And then from there, we can continually sort of re-explore our self-image. And by doing that, we can, you know, look at our habits and perhaps undo them. And it's incredible what time can do. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> with the, with yeah. the right kind of practice. And, uh, yeah. 
And uh, you know, there's a, a, a an an a well-known Alexander Technique teacher. He's been dead a number of years now. Uh, Patrick McDonald, who has written thing, written several things on the technique, and one of the most interesting phrases that he, appears in one of his books that, uh, in terms of human anatomy, he says the facts are favorable. That is, <laughs> our, our our structure, if we really understand it and how yes. it how it uh, can function if we don't interfere with that. Uh, everything is set up uh, in a way to encourage ease and efficiency of movement. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And, it, uh, and you know, and if that, and if that, if that's true on a physical level, it, it must be true, at least to some extent, maybe completely on emotional and mental levels as well. Don't you think? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I completely agree with you there. And uh, it's not always easy or not easy, and it's not always happy or not happy. But uh, once one gets into the, the a taste of the the flow of things. Right, um, right. It's what can it's quite contagious. It's nice, you know. It, so, it uh, can be extraordinarily contagious. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think on that happy note, this might be a, a good time to end our our conversation. Uh, my guest today has been Mastena Nazarian, who's an Alexander Technique teacher in Melbourne, Australia. If you, anything that we've talked about intrigues you and you live in Melbourne, we're going to put a link to her website by the interview. You can contact her. And if you live anywhere else in the world, uh, I'll put a link to a website that will tell you more about the Alexander Technique and will uh, enable you to find a teacher wherever you live. Uh, Mastana, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you very much, Robert.